Okay, let's go. Welcome back to the end zone. My name is Paul. We're, today we're going to go look at the week three pickums. We're going to go ahead and start off with the Thursday night game of San Francisco uh, versus the New York Giants. Uh, this game is going to be at home for San Francisco. Um, I, I don't see any any way that the New York Giants are going to win, especially with Saquon being out. Uh, what do y'all think? Yeah, I, I think this is 49ers all the way. I don't think it's going to be a pretty game at all. I mean, given the Giants seem to have found their stride last week against kind of a stretched thin Cardinals team to say nicely, but yeah, I'm taking 49ers all the way. Yeah, I think that's an easy pick on Thursday night. San Fran's too good. Um, New York, I mean, I know they – I don't want to call it an inspiring win against a really bad Arizona team <laughs> um, who I did pick last week and they almost did, did it. Um, but uh, <laughs> we're not going to get into that. Uh, yeah. I take San Fran in this one. Purdy's looking good. McCaffrey's looking good. Whole team's looking good. So. Yeah. And I, I agree with the both of you. I think that San Francisco definitely looks like one of the best teams in the league right now. The giants have kind of struggled on, both ways and surprisingly more on the defensive side than earlier in the season. So with the 49ers here should be a pretty easy one. All right. Moving to the Sunday matchups. Uh, first game of the day is going to be Cleveland uh, at home against Tennessee Titans. Uh, this one's going to be a tough one. Uh, it depends on kind of who, if the, the, the Browns end up signing a running back, uh, Jerome Ford played well last night, obviously after uh, the Nick Chubb injury. So, that's going to be most of their offense gone. Um, Deshaun Watson did not look very good. Uh, I think he's still struggling to kind of connect with the receivers. Um, even with a good offensive line, he, he just, he doesn't look like his, his former self. Um, with that being said, that I, I think the Tennessee Titans are going to take this one at home. Um, their, their run stopping defense is, is their best part of the defense. And I think that's obviously the best part of the Browns. So uh, I think if they can take that away. The secondary can, can handle, um, what passing offense I do have. Yeah, I completely agree. I think the Titans are going to be able to grind it out. I don't think it's going to be a high scoring game, but I mean, Ryan Tannehill looked fairly good against the Chargers too. I mean, I think they'll have a little bit of versatility in their offense, but I, I think the Titans are going to be able to take it. Yeah. Also taking Tennessee in this one, I watched the game last night and um, I mean, prayers out to Nick Chubb. That's really tough. It was really difficult to watch as a spectator. Um, but uh, that being said, I mean, um, yeah, I don't know. Cleveland did not look good um, against a struggling Steelers team. I mean, the Steelers did kind of seem to find some of the stride that we've talked about in some earlier episodes. But um, I like Tennessee in this game, the way Cleveland played last night. It'll be an ugly game probably, but uh, I trust a balanced running game and uh, somewhat been a somewhat surprising receiving game so far. So I'll take the Titans. I'm going to – and I'm going Cleveland here, I think. Both teams have really good defenses, um, but the you know the the Titans, I, I just don't. I think their secondary is a little banged up right now, um, and I think the Cleveland Browns, even without Nick Chubb, I think they they could still have a little little bit of a better offensive game. Um, so I'm going to go with, with Browns there. All right, moving right along to the next game, we have Atlanta traveling to Detroit to play the Lions in Ford Field. Uh, this one also another interesting matchup. Both teams are are doing pretty well this season. Um, Detroit is a little bit banged up. They have a lot of injuries. Uh, Amon Ross St. Brown got hurt. He left the game early. I don't think it's going to be anything too serious, uh, but they're, uh, Chauncey Gardner-Johnson is going to be put on IR. Um, he should be probably done for the season. That's going to be a big blow for their secondary. Uh, and then kind of without that, like he was our main guy in terms of pass coverage. I think Atlanta is – I know I don't like Ritter, but I think they just have their defense is playing great and they're the best against the pass, um, especially with David Montgomery being out as well. Um, them not fully trusting or utilizing Jameer Gibbs to his fullest extent. Um, this one could be a toss up, but I think I'm going to have to lean at Atlanta. Personally, I think Jameer Gibbs is finally going to get a spotlight, at least to some degree, this game. I'm going to take the Lions. I think they have enough weapons that Atlanta's just not going to be able to keep up with, especially on the offensive side of the ball. They've got Bijan, but the passing attack really has not been there. And Kyle Pitts is throwing his arms up open space. Ritter just isn't throwing it. And Drake London's just overall not really performing too well for a number of factors. But I'm taking Lions on this one. 
Yeah, I agree with you. I think the rookies are going to show out for Detroit this weekend. Um, Laporta and Gibbs, um, I think they'll have both have big games. Um, I know the Detroit's a little uh, little banged up, but I trust them here. Uh, golf's been doing pretty well, so uh, yeah, I'll go Detroit at home. Yeah, I'm, I'm also going to have to go with the Lions. I think that the game is going to heavily rely on golf's passing attack, but I think that they're able to get a quick lead. I don't really see Atlanta, you know, catching up besides they're just trying to run the ball, which hopefully Detroit can stop. They don't have one of the best, better run defenses in the league, but their defense has definitely improved since last year. All right, looks like I'm by myself on that one. That's okay. All right, moving right along, we have the New Orleans Saints going into Lambeau Field playing against the Green Bay Packers. Uh, another one that's kind of questionable. Uh, we're recording this on Tuesday, so we don't have all the full injury reports. Uh, the the Packers are banged up. Uh, I know Lucas Van Ness is out on on the defense side of the ball. Uh, the running back still hurt. I keep trying to get his name. Aaron up. Jones. Aaron Jones. Thank you. Um, Jordan Love we'll get did it not one week. You know, one week we'll get. Jordan <laughs> Love did not look very good last week. He had only 150 yards. He had three touchdowns, but they were all you know short yards touchdowns. Um, I think without those couple pieces and also uh, Watson's still not going to probably not going to play. Um, with that being said, that I think the home field advantage, the New Orleans Saints did not look very good against the Panthers, who are not very good at all. Um, I think I'm going to I'm going to ride with the Packers. I don't think it's going to be a super high scoring game, but I'm going to lean on or lean lean on the uh, Saints defense on this one, especially with Aaron Jones kind of up in the air. I, Think last up check, kind of leaning towards still staying out, struggling a little bit. Um, but yeah, I'm taking Saints on this one, leaning on their defense, but it's not going to be a high score. Yeah, kind of in the same vein as Brandon. Uh, the Saints defense hadn't allowed a touchdown until like the last two minutes um, of last night's game. Uh, so their defense is playing really well, um, which is kind of surprising because they lost a lot of guys in free agency. Uh, but they're performing really well. Um, I think – uh obviously the offense has been sputtering a little bit, but I got to go with Derek Carr. Rashid Shahid has been playing really well for the Saints. Um, definitely a sleeper pick um, before the season. Uh, Chris Olave had a phenomenal catch last night and seems like he's kind of getting back to form. Michael Thomas is not hurt yet, so that's big. And, um, yeah, I'll take the Saints in this game. So I, I think that with this game, I'm going to have to roll with Green Bay. Um, I think that Derek Carr is a little inconsistent, hasn't looked too great with the offense so far. And I'm not in love as the next thing of, of a great Green Bay Packers legend at quarterback, but uh, I think that he he will have a good test against him, but I think he'll pull through. I really just think it comes down to coaching, and I kind of have to give you know the, the cap off to, to Matt LaFleur. I think he's done a pretty good job so far. All right, moving right along, we got the Denver Broncos going down to the South Beach, taking on the Miami Dolphins in Hard Rock Stadium. Uh, this one I don't think should be any question. The Pat, the Denver defense, or the Denver offense did play really well last week um, against a good Commanders defense. Uh, almost won the game, failed a, a two point conversion uh, was the difference between that game. But I, I think Miami's they're just clicking right now. Uh, they look good. I think they're gonna they're gonna be taking this one easily. Yeah, I completely agree. I don't think Denver's going to be able to keep up with their passing attack, honestly. It's explosive, and Denver's receivers are kind of banged up a little bit still, so taking Miami all the way. Yeah, Miami's electric right now. I don't think anybody in the league can keep up with them. I mean, if it's not Tyreek having a 200-yard game, it's Jalen Waddell having a 150-yard game. It's um, exciting to watch. I enjoy watching it. Tua looks phenomenal. They all look good. Um, Miami by a long shot. Yeah, and I'm gonna have to go with y'all. I think that it'll be a high scoring game. Um, I, I do think Miami will pull through. All right, and this was one of the hardest ones for me to choose. Uh, next game is we have the Los Angeles Chargers going uh, to my uh, Minnesota to play the Vikings at US Bank Stadium. This one's kind of we- it's a weird one. Uh, both teams are zero and two. Um, have had very poor defensive performances. Um, Minnesota's more so the lack of turnovers or the, I'm sorry, the excessive turnovers being the, the downfall for them, uh, but then also just not being able to stop two rather poor, you know, offense. Well, the Buccaneers offense and then the the Eagles. Uh, with that being said, I think the Chargers are going to go in there. Um, they have a better run run game, even with Eckler out. Um, and then as long as 
Brandon Staley can actually call it a play right, I, I think the Chargers are going to win this one. This one I was torn on also. I Both teams are have running back questions right now. Obviously, the Chargers with Eckler, if he's going to be healthy or not. And then Alexander Madison for the Vikings, turnovers and just production struggles overall. Um, I think the Vikings edge it out at home. I think it's going to be a close game, and it's not going to be super pretty, but I think they're going to squeeze it out. Yeah, I think this game could be like an offensive person's dream because there's going to be a lot of scoring in this game. I feel like two very strong offensive attacks against two very pretty piss poor defenses. Um, I'm going to go with the statistics. I mentioned it last night and it was on full display this past weekend. Um, Herbert does everything he can to win football games in Los Angeles and um, his defense usually fails him. So I'm going to bet on them doing that again this week and Minnesota winning the game. So with both teams 0-2, um, I think that the losing team's coach is probably going to get fired. Um, I know it's early in the season, but uh, going 0-3 to start a season off with a uh, playoff hopeful and potential Super Bowl running caliber team, I, I think both of these guys are, are both on the hot seat. Um, I'm going to have to go with Minnesota, though. I think the Chargers' defense has looked absolutely terrible, and I don't think Brian Staley has any answer. Um, so I really think that that the Chargers, like Ryan said, they're going to continue to score points on offense, lead them down the field, uh, but that defense is just going to let up, and I think that's going to lead to Staley getting canned yeah. on Monday. I feel really bad for Herbert. It was kind of tough to watch this past weekend. It seems like it happens all the time. All right, next game, we're going ahead, going to the New England Patriots, traveling to New York to play the New York Jets at MetLife Stadium. This one could have been such a great game um, with Rodgers. Obviously, now we got Zach Wilson at uh, head in the ship. He is 0-4 against um, the Patriots in his tenure uh, with a turnover to – with an interception to touchdown ratio of two touchdowns to seven interceptions – um, I think Belichick just knows knows how to stop Zach Wilson. And I think Zach Wilson stops himself. So I'm riding with the uh, with the Giants. Or I'm sorry, with the uh, Patriots. Yeah, the uh, the Patriots do a really good job historically of throwing different defenses out there every week or varying their schemes quite a bit. And I think Wilson's going to be, like he said at the beginning of the season, whoever the next guy is, he's going to make their life hell. I think. Well, the Patriots are going to make his life hell this weekend. To be honest with you, so I'm taking Patriots all the way. Yeah, I'm gonna stick with the Patriots too. Um, I liked what I saw in the game on Sunday. I know they it was such a weird game, but um, I'll I'm gonna rock with them. I don't trust Zach Wilson. Um, it seems like him and Garrett Wilson are good for like a crazy touch one cra- one crazy touchdown in a game, and then that's about it. Aside from that, I think the offense is gonna stutter. Um, so I'll take New England in this game. Yeah, I agree. I'm gonna have to go with New England. I think I mentioned it last week that they would keep it close with Miami, and they did. Um, they also kept it close with Philly to open this. Just, yeah, I don't think Zach Wilson's going to do too well. I think Bill Belichick's going to do his best to make his life hell on Sunday. Um, but I do think that the Jets defense is solid. So, I mean, we'll, we'll see what Mac Jones is made out of. Um, but from now on, again, I got to go with, with New England. All right. Next game up, we got the Buffalo Bills going to Washington uh, to play the Commanders at FedEx Field. Uh, this one is a good matchup as far as how the teams are built. Uh, Buffalo did struggle with the pass rush against the Jets um, week one, which the the commanders are, they have a, their full roster of pass rushers. Um, and they were on full display last week against the Broncos. So it could be a tough one, uh, but I, I think the Bills, the way they absolutely dominated the uh, Las Vegas Raiders last week, uh, I think they could stop the run. And, and I don't trust Washington's offense to move the ball that much. Um, I think I'm taking the Bills with this one. Yeah, I think Stefan Diggs is going to have a very good day, especially for fantasy. He's going to be looking all right for his owners. Um, taking Buffalo Bills, I, I don't think the commander is going to be able to keep up, especially if it becomes a shootout. Yeah, I agree. Um, Buffalo came out swinging like they needed to after that kind of crappy week one showing against the Jets. Um I think uh, their offense is a lot better than Washington's, even though Washington has been one of the more surprising teams uh, this season to start out. Uh, but I, I trust Josh Allen, Stephon Diggs, and, uh, yeah, I'm going to rock with the Bills. Yeah, I'm also going to have to rock with the Bills here. Uh, I don't think that the commander's offense is really that good. I think it's still a little questionable at this point. Um, I think Josh Allen kind of 
in this game. Um, and I agree with you, Brandon. I think Stefan Diggs should get a lot of targets this game. Um, but yeah, I, I just I don't trust the commanders. I know their defense has improved, but I just see them being too shaky on offense to keep up. All right, next game is an AFC South match between the Houston Texans uh, going to, down to Jacksonville to play the Jaguars. Uh, this one I, should be a clean cut. I think Jacksonville will take it. Uh, they do have a little bit of questions on and injury concerns. I know uh, currently right now as of recording, Travis Etienne is still questionable as well as Josh Allen um, and Zay Jones. So those are definitely something to look at, and they could be changing the tide. Uh, if Travis is not there, maybe a different story. Um but as far as the Texans, they're still without Laramie Tunsil. Uh, so that's obviously their best offensive weapon they have or offensive player in general. And so it's it's if Josh Allen is playing, I think he's going to be – it's going to make C.J. Stroud's um, backfield. It's going to be very clogged. Yeah, I, I think Jaguars ultimately, ultimately come away with it. C.J. Stroud's been playing at a better level. He's been improving quite a bit. But I think being in Jacksonville, I'm going to lean on home field advantage. And Travis Etienne may be questionable, like you're saying, but I think Tank Bigsby could pick that up. Say it does come down, Travis Etienne's out. I think Tank Bigsby could have a pretty good day on Houston. Yeah, I completely agree. Um, I'm still rocking with Jacksonville. Uh, uh, Christian Kirk kind of picked up the slack of Calvin Ridley this week. So it's in the – Kind of the same vein of what I said earlier um, about a team that is – oh, about Miami. Um, between Waddle and uh, Tyreek, I think it's kind of one of those things where if Calvin has a good game, Kirk might not, but it'll be the other way around. So there's just good weapons all around that team. And Evan Ingram's a solid tight end too. Um, I don't trust um, – <clears throat> don't really trust Houston right now. CJ Stroud did look pretty good. Uh, this past week, but it's pretty easy to go with Jacksonville in this game. Yeah, I, I'm i going to have to agree with you. I think Jacksonville will be able to take this one. Um, you know, I think that Stroud has looked pretty impressive as a rookie so far, uh, but I just don't trust the Texans' defense uh, and with Lawrence with all the weapons that he has. I, I think he'll kind of blow the top off. Um, wouldn't be surprised if it stays kind of close for the first half uh, before Bill really makes and, and gains a lead, but uh, yeah, it should be a good one, though. All right, in the last of the morning matchups, we have the Indianapolis Colts going to Maryland to playing with the Baltimore Ravens. This one's going to be nice and simple. Anthony Richardson is probably going to be missing the game uh, with concussion protocol. Um, other than that, the Baltimore Ravens looked pretty good last week, beating the uh, the Bengals. Their defense looks stout. Uh, they can still run the ball even without Dobbins. I'm taking Baltimore all the way. Yeah, I'm taking Baltimore on this one with Richardson out especially. I did have a little bit of a question, though, because Minshew, I mean, he can win games. I mean, he's proven it. He's been able to win some important games. But I, in Baltimore, they've been doing all right, taking Baltimore. Yeah, I'm a Minshew fan, so I'd love to root for him here, but I can't. Um, try to make smarter decisions so I can catch up <laughs> to y'all. <laughs> um, Baltimore, yeah, they looked great against the Bengals. Um, I mean, I, I think it's just uh, – uh, this one's pretty easy for me. I think Baltimore will come out swinging. And they'll get this job done. Um, like I said, would love to root for Gardner, but he doesn't have enough weapons on the Colts offense to really make anything happen. So it should be Baltimore in a decently easy win. Yeah, I'm going to have to agree with you. I think Baltimore has been firing off on all cylinders from offense, defense, and special teams. Um, Richardson, again, he's been solid, um, and I'm hoping that he plays. Um, but, I mean, with a concussion, it's kind of tough to tell. So we'll, we'll see how that turns out. Um, but yeah, I, I just think that Baltimore has been able to establish too good of a of an offensive attack, and especially against a kind of lackluster Indianapolis defense so far. So we'll see how things go, but I'm gonna have to go with Baltimore. All right, moving to the trio of the mid afternoon games. Uh, first one up is going to be Carolina Panthers traveling to Seattle, playing the Seahawks. Panthers just don't look good. Uh, Bryce Young is struggling. Um, he can he can barely get a pass off. His offensive line is just getting blown through. Um, the Seahawks had a nice win against uh, the Lions last week. Lockett uh, carried the team. Jason and DK both went to the tent for a little bit of the game. Should be fine. Um, I think the Seahawks are going to roll easily in this one. Yeah, I, the Seahawks had a great bounce back win last week. Shout out to Tim for, I think, being the only one to get that pick correct last week. But, I yeah, I, I think they're going to have a pretty good week, Seahawks. 
Yeah, I agree. I watched um, the Saints uh, Carolina game last night. Carolina just looks bad. I mean, Saints didn't look great. Carolina looks bad. Um, so should be a pretty solid win for Seattle. Um, shouldn't be anything too crazy for them. They should be able to handle whatever Carolina tries to throw at them. Um, feel good about Geno. If those guys are healthy, like Paul mentioned, um, shouldn't be any issues. Yeah, I'm going to have to agree with you. I think that Seattle should take this one. Um, even though their defense hasn't looked great to start the year off, uh, I think they should be able to gain some confidence going against uh, Ricky, you know, and Bryce Young. I do want to point out, though, Seattle, They, I think they're still without both offensive tackles. Um, so I, I think that, you know, Derek Brown and and, and uh, Brian Burns should be able to kind of line up and, and cause some, some little havoc here on the pass rushing side. But I still see Seattle taking, especially, uh, you know, with the home field advantage as well. Don't forget Frankie Louvu too. He had two sacks last night. That dude is a gamer. All right. And then moving to one of the easier games of the week, uh, Chicago Bears traveling to Kansas City against the Chiefs. Kansas City's defense is playing on another level. Uh, only given up two touchdowns this season. Uh, 20, I believe it's 27 points total. Um, they're just looking great. And honestly, the, the offense shouldn't struggle a whole lot against this lackluster defense the Bears have. Um, Kansas City all the way. Yeah, sorry. Uh, the I'm taking Chiefs on this one. I don't think the Bears are going to be able to keep up. Um, albeit their weapons at the receiving core have been kind of down on this year, but Kelsey should be back to normal and may, hopefully off a kind of a pitch count as they described it. So I'm taking Chiefs all the way. Kansas City Chiefs. Yeah, I'm going to go with mm -hmm. Kansas City. Not Not too hard here. All right, in the last afternoon game, probably an even easier selection. Uh, Dallas Cowboys going to Arizona. Dallas defense may have the highest scoring fantasy performance again. Uh, they may replicate week one. Uh, although Josh Dobbs uh, did play pretty well uh, first half against the um, the Giants last week. I think this is not even going to be close. Um, Dallas is going to steamroll them. Yeah, taking Dallas. And, you know, honestly, I'm not going to rule it out that Dallas's defense scores more than the Cardinals' offense. Like, I could completely see it happening. So, taking the Cowboys. Yeah, I know I've been picking the Cardinals just to irk you, Brandon, um, but I uh, can't do that this week. Uh, <laughs> yeah, don't. <laughs> Dallas, Dallas is on another level right now. The defense is absolutely insane. They've scored, like, 55 fantasy points this season in two games. Um, they're on, I mean, Dan Quinn's a freaking genius. Micah Parsons is the best defensive player in the league. Um, I could go on and on about Dallas and I have nothing good to say about the Cardinals. This will be a, another fun game as a Cowboys fan to watch. Yeah. Paul, you brought up how Kansas city defense is playing on another level. I think Dallas's defense is playing on another world, man. They're freaking insane. Yeah. Just guys flying all around making plays. Yeah. I just don't see Arizona even being able to keep up, even if it was just an offensive so I'm going to have to roll with Dallas on the easy one here. Yeah, I really think this could be an ugly shutout, to be honest with you. James Conner, he was the one bright spot last week. I, I, I think he's going to get bottled up very easily. All right, and then to the Sunday night game, we have Pittsburgh Steelers traveling to Las Vegas to play the Raiders. This one's another one that I kind of had uh, questions on. The Pittsburgh offense is just so bad. Uh, Kenny Pickett is not not the guy. Um, and neither, I mean, especially with Deontay Johnson not playing or being on IR, uh, Najee Harris poor, their offensive line is not holding up as, as well as they should defense carried them last night. Um, and I, I just don't think as long as Devonte is healthy, um, and is, if Jacoby Myers is back and then as long as Josh Jacobs can average or get more than negative two rushing yards, um, I don't see any world where the Vegas, the Raiders should lose this one. Yeah, I'm taking the Raiders also. I think the game's going to be decided when the Raiders are on offense and the Steelers are on defense personally, but I think the Raiders really – or sorry, the Steelers really haven't found their passing attack yet. Najee's underperforming quite a bit. I think the Raiders' offense is going to carry him to a win. Yeah, this one's hard for me. Um, I think Pittsburgh should feel pretty good about the game uh, that they played last night. Uh, their defense looked phenomenal. Um T.J. Watt still reminding us, you know, he's he's the bug in the air. If Michael Parsons wasn't playing football, he would be my pick for the best player, defensive player in the league. Um, I this one's hard. 
Uh, I think I'm going to roll with Pitt. I think they're going to carry in some momentum from the game last week. Seems like George Pickens kind of decided to wake up and score points for my fantasy team uh, this year or this weekend. Uh, I'll roll with Pitt. I don't feel great about it. I don't feel good about this game. But, um, yeah, I'll go with Pittsburgh. No, I, I agree with you, Ryan. I think it's a little bit of a coin flip, but I'm going to have to go with Pittsburgh as well. I think their defense is much better than the Raiders. Um, and you guys said that Kenny Pickett isn't it, but he's also played against two top five, top ten defenses week to week. So I really think that he's going to be able to take advantage of the Vegas Raiders. I mean, they don't really have any sort of main factor on defense besides Max Crosby. And the Pittsburgh O-line is not terrible. It really just comes down to their play calling. Um, but I, I still am going to go with Pitt. I think they have better – um, you know, playmakers on the defensive side of the ball as well as the offensive side of the ball um, combined. So it, it should be a close one, but I, I got to give it to the Steelers. All right, moving to another Monday night doubleheader. Uh, first game of the slate is going to be Philadelphia traveling down to Tampa Bay to play the Bucks. Uh, Philadelphia looked really good last week, uh, playing against a good offense in, in Minnesota. Tampa Bay, I... I know Baker's playing decent, but I just don't see how they can maintain that. Uh, they've played two support or subpar defenses. Um, once they get to, you know, once they get to the Eagles level caliber of defense, I don't think they can put up anything. Um, I'm thinking it's going to be kind of a blowout, honestly, for Philadelphia. Yeah, I I think Philly's going to take it. I was, I questioned it a little bit early on, but the more and more I thought about it, yeah, I think Philly. The, or the Buccaneers are just not going to be able to keep up with them, simply said. Yeah, I, um, I've um i enjoyed rooting for Tampa Bay. I like to root for Baker, um, always have. But, uh, yeah, I can't pick them in this game. The Eagles are still too good. Um, For the love of God, Nick Sirianni, give DeAndre Swift a handoff when y'all are on the one-yard line. Um, But, yeah, I mean, yeah, this is the Eagles, man. Jalen Hurts seems to kind of get back in a rhythm a little bit. Um, A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith um, – yeah, it's hard not to go with them. I'm, I'm going to have to go with a sleeper pick here, man. I'm going to have to go with the Bucks. I hate Baker Mayfield. I can't stand him. But somehow he's kind of gotten a swagger back. I think that he is uh, going to take it to Tampa Bay, and I think that they're going to be rooting for him really pretty hard. Their defense has been shockingly good. Um, and I hate to say it, guys, the Eagles' offense has looked kind of suspect. I don't think it's been as good as everyone says it is. Or as as well, or they're not playing as well as they were last year, and that's for sure. They're not explosive. A lot of their touchdowns have been off the double cheek push. Like eventually you're going to have to play a better defensive line when, you know, compared to the Patriots or, or the the Vikings. And and I hate to say it, dude, the, the Bucks. I mean, with Vita Vea in the middle, you're going to win a lot of those double cheek pushes often, um, especially with the linebackers that they have. So, I mean, we'll see how things go, man. I think that the Bucs, um, they're again, they're going to have a really true test on, um, you know, with their offense going against that D line um, from Philly. But I mean, I think that Baker is going to be pretty, you know, He's going to have to start off hot. Um, I think they're going to have to establish a run game and then after that kind of break it with the play action. But, I mean, you can't disregard that Mike Evans and uh, Chris Godwin are still kind of, you know, up there when it turn- comes to being some of the top playmakers um, on the on the on at the wide receiver position. So, again, a little bit of a sleeper pick. I just don't trust the Eagles yet. They've kind of started off slow and sluggish on offense, um, and their defense has been solid but not top three as we all predicted they would be to start the year off. I would like to – say that i i want tampa bay to win i'm just trying to be smart <laughs> and catch up hey when you have a lead man <laughs> i don't like rooting for the eagles at all all right in the final game of week three uh we have the los angeles rams traveling to cincinnati to play the Bengals. um at home currently the Bengals are favored um the line is only two and a half um i don't i think joe burrow is gonna have to step up and that offense is going to have to take over and show us why they went to the Super Bowl a couple years ago. Um, the Rams do have fantasy waiver wire darlings and Kyron Williams and Puka Nakua. Um, they're playing out of their mind, but I, I think I think that the Bengals offense is just too high powered, and they've been kind of lackluster the, the past um, two weeks. They've been playing pretty good defenses, but I I think they need to step up, and I think they'll take this one. Going off your point of saying the Bengals' offense is high-powered, I mean, it really has struggled to this point. I had a hard time on this one, but I think I'm going to take the Rams because, honestly, they have been relatively and unexpectedly consistent as far as scoring and finding the end zone. So I'm taking the Rams on it. I mean, they've had some surprising receivers come out of the woodwork, but I'm going to take the Rams. Yeah, in the same vein of what I just said about the other Monday night game, it, I really don't want to root against Joe Burrow because that's my boy, but um, I'm, I'm going to – 
pick the team that has the hot hand right now. In Los Angeles, the Rams, they've come out swinging. Uh, Puka's scored the second most fantasy points in the league, so good for him. Um, you know, this might be the week that Cincinnati wakes up and this pick is all for naught. But um, like I said, I'm going to give the the team with the hot hand the pick here and go with the Rams. I'm also going to have to go with the Rams. I mean, I think that they've been able to put up points against some um, pretty decent defense. You know, I, I think that Joe Burrow, uh, like he could come back and, and and really, you know, be a playmaker and and find his all of his weapons and and kind of turn this into a shootout. But I mean, dude, I've heard that he retweaked his calf injury a little bit more. I mean, dude, they, you know, the def- Rams defense, they still have Aaron Donald and he's still set to be a beast. I just, part of me is really kind of hoping that the Bengals don't go out there with <laughs> Joe Burrow just because, you know, you saw what happened with the calf injury with Aaron Rodgers and how that turned out to be, you know, actually pretty significant and in turning into, uh, you know, his Achilles tear. So I'm really hoping the Bengals kind of play it, you know, cautious for the quarterback and, and you know, a guy that they just paid a lot of money to. I, I wouldn't be surprised if he sits this one out. I know it might be a little bit of a shocker because I know he's a competitor, but I mean, I'd rather keep my guy for their playoff push later in the season than ruin the whole year right away. Yeah. All right, and that wraps up our week three pickums. Uh, just to recap where our current standings are, uh, currently Tim is in the lead with 21 and 11. Um, I'm in second with 20 and 12. Brandon's in third with 18 and 14. And Ryan's at 17 and 15, bringing in the back. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, I take chances, baby. That's how you win. It. Hey, it takes money to make money. <laughs> but, Scared uh, money don't make money. If you like what you heard, please drop us a follow. Um, subscribe for more. We always appreciate a like on our content. Um, leave your predictions down below in the com- in the comment section. Um, with that being said, you'll have a good one. Till next yeah. week. And like I said last week, if y'all win money on our picks, we will take commission. <laughs> Later, y'all.